Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture we are going to initialize a Firebase project on our computer. So go to your terminal or command line and first we have to create a folder to store our project. You could create the folder manually or via the command line. To create a folder via the command line first go to where you want to create the folder and then use the command mkdir. We're going to enter a folder name like my home project. Then we're going to cd into my home project. So now we're inside of that project folder. Here we're going to use Firebase init to initialize a new Firebase project in this directory. So you should see this message. You're about to initialize a Firebase project in this directory. Then you'll be prompted to select which features of Firebase do you want to set up for this directory. Ple press space to select a feature and press enter to confirm your choices at the end. You can press space to select one, A to toggle all, I to invert and enter to proceed. So we have several options here. First we have real time database as an option. We can configure a security rules file for real-time database and optionally a provision default instance. Then we have Firestore to configure security rules and indices files for Firestore. We have functions to configure a cloud functions directory and its files. We have hosting to configure files for Firebase hosting and optionally set up GitHub action deploys hosting again to set up GitHub action deploys, storage to configure a security rules file for cloud storage, emulators to set up local emulators for Firebase products, remote config to configure a template file for remote config, and then we're back at the start. All right, so I want to select real-time database, so I hit space. Then I can use my arrow keys to go down and I want to select functions and hosting as well. These are the three Firebase features we're going to use in our project. When you're done hit enter and this is going to allow you to set up your project. So we have to associate the project directory with a Firebase project. We have options to use an existing project to create a new project add Firebase to an existing Google Cloud Platform project or to not set up a default project. All right, so for this project, we want to use an existing project. So we hit enter and then we can select one of the Firebase projects from our actions on Google. So we recently created my home project B193F, which is a random ID that's added to the end of your project name. Our project name being my home project. So select the project that you want to use from your actions on Google and hit enter. Next the database will be set up with Firebase database.googleapis.com. So it's going to enable any required APIs. Next up you'll be asked it seems like you haven't initialized a real-time database in your project yet. Do you want to set it up? Enter Y for yes and hit enter. Then you'll be prompted to choose a location for your default real-time database instance. You want to choose a location that is close to you. So choose one of the options and hit enter. Next step, you'll get the message that the database instance was created. Firebase real-time database security rules allow you to define how your database should be structured and when your data can be read from and written to. So you can define the rules for accessing this database. Next, you'll get a prompt which file should be used for real-time database security rules. This will be a file created for you if you don't have it. So you can use the default database.rules.json or if you have your own file, you can use that as well. I'm going to use the default. Future modifications to database.rules.json will update real-time database security rules when you deploy with Firebase Deploy. So this new file has been created for you and if you 
edit the file, it will edit the rules of your database. Next up, we have to set up functions. A functions directory will be created in your project folder with sample code pre-configured. Functions can be deployed with Firebase Deploy. We have to choose a language to use to write cloud functions. We can use JavaScript or TypeScript, which is very similar to JavaScript, but allows for object orientation and for having types. So you can specify that you want variables to be a specific data type. For our purposes, we can just stick to JavaScript. Next, you'll be asked, do you want to use ESLint to catch probable bugs and enforce styles? So you can hit yes or no for ESLint. Then you'll get the message that you have several new files created, functions slash package.json, functions ESLint, functions index.js, and functions git ignore. So you have several files created, package.json to define the dependencies of the project, what the project needs in order to run, ESLint for catching probable bugs and enforcing style, index.js, which contains the main functionality, the entry point to the app, and git ignore, which contains a list of files that you want to ignore when uploading the project to GitHub, which allows you to store your project and see version changes. Now, then you'll get the message, do you want to install dependencies with NPM now? Let's enter Y for yes and hit enter. This will take all of the tools listed in package.json and it will install them. So that way your project is ready to go with the necessary tools installed. If you get any error messages at this point or at any point during the setup process, search up your error messages online because oftentimes if you have a question or a bug or an error message, other people, other developers have had that error message as well and you can find a solution. There are many popular websites for asking questions like Stack Overflow and GitHub. Next up, we have to set up hosting. Your public directory is the folder that will contain hosting assets to be uploaded with Firebase Deploy because Firebase can host our website. So we can access our website via Firebase if it's hosted by Firebase. If you have a build process for your assets, use your build output directory. So this is telling us what we want to use as the folder that will store our hosting assets, our website files, or our project files. So we will get asked, do you want to use as your public directory, the public folder? We can just hit enter for yes. This will create a public folder for us in our project. Then we'll get asked, do we want to configure as a single page app? Which means we'll rewrite all URLs to index.html. Let's select yes to keep our project simple. Then we'll get asked, do we want to set up automatic builds and deploys with GitHub? GitHub allows you to store your projects as a backup and also allows you to see version changes and especially to manage a project with a team. We don't need it for our purposes, so we can select N for no and hit enter. You'll see the message that we now have a new folder called public, and in there we have a new file called index.html. HTML contains the skeleton of our website, so it contains all of the elements of the website. We'll have configuration information in a new file called firebase.json project information in a new file called Firebase RC, and git ignore files listed in git ignore. And just like that, our Firebase initialization is complete. Awesome, so now we can check out our project folder and its contents either just by opening the folder or on Windows use the command dir, on Mac or Linux use the command ls, and you can see we have some new files in our project. Firebase created these for us. We have a file database.rules.json and firebase.json. We have a folder functions and a folder public. Let's take a look at what we have in these files. So I'm going to open my project folder 
with a code editor. I'm going to use a Visual Studio code, but you can use any code editor. So here is my home project in Visual Studio code, my code editor. First, I have several files, Firebase RC, which lists out some data about what is the Google Actions project associated with this project. Then we have .git ignore. This lists out all of the files that will be ignored when I upload my project to GitHub, which is optional. Then I have database.rules.json. So here we have rules about our database. And you can visit firebase.google.com slash docs slash database slash security to learn more about security rules. So in this case, our rules are setting read to false and write to false. Then we have firebase.json. This contains JavaScript object notation, which means a JavaScript object. And this defines several properties and their values, like where are our database rules? How do we pre-deploy functions? What are we using as the folder for hosting? And which folders are we ignoring? What are we using for rewrites? So if you want to change your folder used for hosting, you can change it here. Then we have two folders, functions and public. In functions, we first have node modules, which contains all of the required dependencies of the project. Then we have ESLintRC, which contains information for linting. We also have a Git ignore of which folders or files are we ignoring when uploading to GitHub. We also have index.js. This is the starting point for our application. So here we have a constant called functions that's requiring Firebase functions. There is a link for a suggested tutorial of creating and deploying your first cloud functions. And then there's some sample code that you can use to build out your first function here called hello world which uses functions.https.onRequest. So you can comment this out by using command question mark and here you can then enable this sample function. Then don't forget to save your file if you've made a change to it. Then let me bring back my explorer and go to our next file. We have package lock.json and package.json. Package.json lists out information about your project. For example, here we have the name of the folder, the description, and this was all auto-generated for us by Firebase. We also have scripts, which means we can call lint to run eslint, we can call serve to run the Firebase emulators. We can call shell to run Firebase shell functions. Start to start shell. We can use the command deploy to deploy our project and logs to see logs. We also have the engine used, which is node version 16. Our main entry point to the app is index.js. And we have dependencies listed for this folder which are Firebase admin and Firebase functions. We also have development dependencies, ESLint, ESLint configuration Google, and Firebase functions test. So these are what the project needs for development mode versus what the project needs to run. Next up, we have a folder called public, which contains a file index.html. Index.html contains the elements of our website. So here we have a meta character set. We have some more metadata, typical HTML metadata, some scripts that are used, some more scripts that are used. So you can see we're using Firebase scripts for different Firebase functionality, like a database, functions, messaging, analytics. So all of these are included. We also have some default styling created for us by Firebase, and we have some default HTML created by Firebase, 
some headings, a paragraph, and a script with some JavaScript. So when our document is loaded, we're going to run some functionality. We can uncomment these to implement them or to call them. We also have some default JavaScript where we are instantiating a new Firebase app with some features. And then we're going to check was the creation of the Firebase app successful or not. So this is some default setup for a basic website created for us by Firebase. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.